Magandang araw mga bata! Ako si Ma'am Regin, ang teacher mo sa math. Today we will be learning about collecting and organizing the statistical data. This is a lesson for grade 7 mathematics under quarter 4, lesson 2. Kaya tara na and let's do the math. Before you proceed in watching this video for lesson 2 ng ating quarter 4 for grade 7 mathematics, I would recommend that you watch lesson 1, which is the introduction to statistics. Dahil doon, nai-discuss natin yung basics of statistics, its purpose and function, pati na rin yung importance of getting a reliable and valid data, at yung paraan kung paano ito makukuha. In this lesson, we'll get to learn more about collecting those data in organizing them. For this situation, we have a mongo seed experimentation. A group of three students for a science experiment measured the stem lengths in millimeters of 24 sprouting mongo seeds after five days. So this is an illustration of what the three students are experimenting mongo seeds. These are the individual records of the three students. We have three students. We have Amelia, Carlos, and Fatima. Ito yung record ni Amelia. Ito naman yung kay Carlos at ito yung kay Fatima. Whose record will you look at if you'd like to know the observation of a particular plant letter? Let's observe each of the students' individual records. For Amelia's record, we can see that the measurement of the stem lengths are recorded. However, hindi ini-indicate dito kung anong specific plant ito. For Carlos's record, here is the plant label from A to X dahil 24 lamang sila na sprouting mongo seeds. And side by side with it, nandun yung kanyang length of the stem per plant label. For Fatima's record, kung mapapansin natin, hindi sunod-sunod yung plant label as compared to Carlos's record. Dahil ang ginawa ni Fatima ay yung length of stem niya, in-arrange niya in a decreasing order. Meaning, yung plant label na may pinaka-mahabang length yung nasa taas niya, papunta doon sa may mga pinaka-mababa or maliit na stem length. Kaya ganito yung record ni Fatima. So, for this question, ang hinahanap natin ay yung particular plant letter. Gano'ng kahaba ba yung kanyang stem in millimeters? Say, for example, ang titignan natin ay yung plant C. We will be looking at Carlos's record because it's easier to look at. So, kung hahanapin natin ay plant C, dahil sunod-sunod yung plant label, plant C, alam natin agad na 22 millimeters yung kanyang stem length. For Amelia, hindi natin alam kung ano dito yung sukat ng plant C at all. So, we will not be looking at Amelia's record. For Fatima's record, we can look at it. However, hahanapin natin yung plant C. Dito, hahanapin pa natin siya. Which will take a longer time as compared to looking at Carlos's record wherein sunod-sunod chronologically arrange yung mga plant label. Next question, whose record will you look at if you'd like to know which plant has the longest or shortest stem measurement? In this case, ang titignan naman natin ay yung record ni Fatima. Dahil yung record ni Fatima arranged siya in a decreasing order. Alam agad natin na yung plant D, siya yung may length of stem na pinaka mahaba, longest, 32 millimeters. At yung kanyang kabaliktaran ay yung either plant H, P, or Q na 10 millimeters yung sukat naman. So in this case, mas madaling tignan yung record ni Fatima as compared to Carlos na hahanapin pa natin isa-isa kung ano-ano yung mga plant label na may 10 millimeters or if we're actually looking for 10, there could be 9 or less. As compared to Fatima, maayos siya na naka-arrange in a decreasing order. Last question, whose record would you look at if you'd like to know how many plants have a stem measurement of 25 millimeters? Again, we'll be looking at Fatima's record. Because in this case, sunod-sunod yung stem lengths, titignan agad natin yung 25. In this case, meron tayong tatlo na plant label na may 25 millimeters na sukat, E, F, and N. Whereas, kung titignan natin yung kay Carlos, hahanapin pa natin isa-isa kung ano-ano yung mga plant labels na merong 25 millimeter na sukat, which will take a long time. Kaya naman, once you're able to collect your data, arranging them is very important depending on what you'll do with the data. 
aside from the experimentation method or the observation method that we looked at earlier, here are some other methods of collecting or gathering statistical data. We have two. First is the direct method. Under direct method, we have the following. First is observation, tulad ng ating example kanina. It's experimentation and observation as well. Observation is when the researcher sees the situation directly. Tulad ng ating example kanina ng mga lucid experimentation. The group of three students, Amelia, Carlos, and Fatima, were able to observe the Mongo seed sprout for five days. That is why they're able to collect and then record their data about that experimentation. Another example of a phenomenon wherein we can use the observation method to collect data is the patient's challenge. Ito ay yung challenge na nauuso sa mga social media platforms. Say for example, may bata na iiwanan mo ng cookie or chocolate tapos alagyan mo siya ng camera it's either alam niya na nire-record siya ng camera na ito o hindi depende dun sa sitwasyon and then sasabihan mo siya na babalik ka lang saglit may pupuntahan ka lang huwag muna niyang kainin yung food na nandun sa harap niya you are trying to observe how much patience that child has so yun ay example ng observation method aside from that pwede rin yung meron kang given scenario na inobserbahan mo yung specific attitude ng isang group or isang individual. Yung mga ganong scenarios, you can apply observation methods so that you can collect your statistical data. Another direct method that you can use for gathering data is the interview. It is done through direct conversations which can be classified as personal, via telephone, or online interview. Example nito ay if you're looking at the effects of COVID-19 vaccines to senior citizens. What you'll have to do is you can interview them either personally. Ngayon, very rampant na yung meron tayo mga interviews via online platforms. Or pwede rin naman via telephones or whichever means. So long as you are having direct conversations with the respondent for you to collect data, that is a form of interview. Another example is getting to know the favorite Disney character of Kinder students. You can simply talk to kinder students, ask them of their favorite Disney character, and that is considered an interview. Aside from the direct method, we also have the indirect method of collecting or gathering the data. First, we can use questionnaire. This method uses of a questionnaire. Ang pinakakomon na statistical instrument is the survey questionnaire. Ang example nito ay enrollment forms. To avoid interruptions, dahil matagal kapag i-interview mo yung mga enrollees one by one, what we do is that we provide them with an enrollment form and they fill it out. And through their answers in that enrollment form, we're able to gather data from them. Aside from that, we also have the bio data form for applicants. Aside from questionnaires, we also have an indirect method of reading statistical publication. This method gathers data from the legal documents imposed by law, such as registered certificates. One example is identifying the numbers of registered voters in a specific municipality. Ang ating government ay merong specific department na nag-aasikaso nitong mga voters natin per municipality and for the national level. At pwede nating tignan doon sa platform na yun or sa website na yun kung gusto nating malaman yung registered voters in a specific municipality. Aside from that, we can also get the population of a specific region, say for example, Region 4A, Calabarzon. Sa mga census, inaalam yung tao per household. Once compiled yung data nun, ilalagay yun sa isang database at makikita natin yung population for each region. And once we're able to collect or gather the pertinent data that we need for a specific study, we need to organize these data. First, we can organize the data in a tabular form, in table form. It's a systematic way to arrange data where the data are written in rows or horizontally or columns vertically for easy reference. So, ang example natin, this is a table. It's written vertically, so it makes use of columns. This one at the top is the title, Table 1, Top 20 Most Common Names Among Males and Females in the Philippines for the Year 2005. Yun yung title. The title gives us information about what the data is all about. And then we also have the heading. These are the heading, males, total number of 
birth for males and then the percentage will also have females, the total number of births for females and the percentage in heading. The heading tells us the categories per column. Column dahil ito ay written vertically. Kapag naman horizontally, rows yung gagamitin natin. Based on the table, let's answer a few questions. What is the most common male name? How about the most common female name? So looking at this, mapapansin natin na yung ating data is arranged in a decreasing order wherein yung top data natin ay tumutuloy doon sa name ng male and female na may pinakamaraming total life birth na yun ang pangalan. Looking at this table, Joshua is ranked 1, meaning for a total male life birth of 7,758, all of them are named Joshua. Meaning, the most common male name is Joshua. For the female counterpart, it's Angel. Because out of the total female life births, 4,722 of them are named Angel. Yan, sagot natin for number 1 ay Joshua for male and Angel for female. Next question, in 2005, what is the total recorded male births? Ito ay table natin for 2005. For male births, ito yung titignan natin. The total male life births ay 878,084 for the male life births. At tinatanong dito ay male at hindi female. So, ito yung ating sagot. For number 2, ang sagot natin ay 878,084. For number 3, based on the table, how many male births have John Mark as their name? So, dito sa male, hahanapin natin yung John Mark. Ito yung John Mark number 5. Out of this total male life births, 4,758 na mga bata ang pangalan ay John Mark. Kaya naman ang sagot natin sa number 3 ay 4,758. For number 4, between James and Mary Joy, which has a greater corresponding number of childbirths? Tignan natin yung James under ng male and Mary Joy for female. So for James, 2,969 na mga batang lalaki ang may pangalan na James. For Mary Joy, ranked 5, 2,579 na mga batang babae ang may pangalan na Mary Joy. Between the two, mas maraming bata ang may pangalan na James. And number 5, in 2005, what proportion of the total female birds has the name Jasmine? So for female, hanapin natin yung may pangalan na Jasmine. Out of the total life births na 810,834, 2,299 ang mga batang may pangalan Jasmine. And that is 0.28%. Yan yung ating sagot for number 5. This is how you organize the data in a table and how you read the data to answer specific questions. Aside from table, we can also use the stem and leaf display. It's a method to organize data wherein the leading digits of the data are the stem values while the trailing digits are the leaf values. This is an example. Magbalik tayo doon sa record ni Carlos sa Mongo Seed Experimentation. We have here the plant label and the length of each stem in millimeters. Itong mga ito, yung unang digits natin ay ang ating tinatawag na leading digits. At yung mga nasa dulo or yung pangalawang part ay yung mga tinatawag natin na trailing digits. Where in itong mga leading digits na ito ay yung mga stem values natin at yung trailing digits ay mga left values. So how do we construct a stem and leaf display? We have to follow these steps. First, you need to write the possible leading digits under the stem. Ito yung ating table. Lalagay natin yung stem at yung leaf. So in this case, yung stem, ang titignan lang natin dito ay yung leading digits. Mapapansin natin, ang mga leading digits ay either 2, 3, 1, at yun lamang. Walang 4 and above. So yung stem natin ay 1, 2, and 3 lamang. Next, record each measurement from the table. So one by one, itong mga trailing digits natin ay i-record natin dito sa leaf part ng ating table. Starting from plant label A. So, yun ay 24. Kaya naman, punta tayo sa stem na 2. At yung kanyang trailing digit na leaf ay 4. Kaya 
Kaya ilagay natin 4. For plant B, yun ay 25. Next, plant C ay 22. Plant D ay 32. Kaya pansinin natin yung plant D ay nandito sa stem na 3 at yung kanyang leaf ay 32. Punta tayo sa E. Ang E ay 28. F ay 25. G ay 26. At ang H ay 10. Kaya mapapansin natin ang ating H ay dito sa may stem 1 at yung kanyang leaf ay 0. Next, for I, we have 27. J is 20. K is 12. L, 28. M, 18. N, 25. Plot label O, I, 28. P and Q, I, both 10. R, I, 27. S, I, 14. D, I, 18. Plant U, I, 28. Yung plant V, I, 14. W, I, 18. And lastly, our plant label X, I, 15 millimeters. So, ito lamang yung ating table na na-organize from this. Ito yung ating stem and leaf display. Next step is to rewrite the trailing digits in an increasing order. Ito yung ating for stem 1, ito yung kanyang mga leaf. For stem 2, ito naman yung kanyang mga leaf. At for stem 3, ito yung kanyang leaf na isa lamang. Arrange in an increasing order. And that's it for our video for today mga bata. Give this video a thumbs up kung natulungan kayo nito sa inyong lesson. Also, feel free to comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Ang Teacher Musama, for more grade 7 content. Turn on the notification bell para lagi kayong updated kung meron na tayong bagong video. And of course, don't forget to share this video para mas marami pa akong mga grade 7 na batang tulad mo ang maabot at maturuan dahil